Hello, good afternoon or good morning, wherever you, you may be. My name is Sanat Atem and I'm uh, speaking with you now from the West Bank. I'm the Education USA advisor, and I would like to welcome you to um, College Week Live. Today's uh, session will focus uh, mostly on understanding yourself. Why do you want to study in the US? Uh, taking the time out to discover and to learn more about what um, are the qualifications that would make you the right fit for uh, studying in the US. Uh, so let's start our presentation. I think before you even think about studying in the US and searching for programs that may be applicable to you, I think before that, before you explore your options, before you choose your direction, make your plans and take action, it's really important to know yourself. What will make your application stand out? Um, it's very, very important that um, uh, your application is very, very strong. And in order for you to have a very strong competitive application or applications to multiple schools, it's very, very important for you to uh, ask yourself several questions. Uh, what are your weaknesses? Uh, what are your strengths? Um, what is your academic status? Will you be applying as an incoming freshman, as an incoming transfer student, or will you be uh, uh, applying as a graduate student? Will you apply as a domestic, or will you apply as an international? Uh, some of you may have dual citizenships. Uh, so maybe if you are applying to the U.S., uh, you may be considered as a domestic student. What are what is the information that you will need in order to, and possibly documentation that you will need to verify your dual citizenship, and what will qualify you for various um, financial aid uh, or or scholarships uh, that are offered for either U.S. citizens or international uh, students in general. Um, Academically, how strong are you academically? Um, what is your GPA? Um, uh, the kinds of classes that you took, uh, were they rigorous, were they difficult classes? Uh, it's very, very important for you to kind of have an understanding uh, of your academic potential uh, so that you can apply to programs that will be the best fit uh, for you. How strong is your English? You may be required uh, for most universities to take uh, various uh, standardized exams, including um, uh, English proficiency exam called the TOEFL IBT. You may, you may be required to take other exams as well. So it's very, very important to kind of uh, have an understanding and possibly uh, uh, go through um, uh, the Education USA advising centers in your area. If you, if you have a, an advising center where you are in your home country, uh, it would make sense for you to uh, make an appointment or visit them or send them an email about how you can uh, determine if your English proficiency is, is um, uh, at the uh, level uh, to which you can apply and be a competitive uh, candidate. Uh, have you done community, community service? Uh, do you have any extracurricular activities? Uh, do you have any work experience if you're planning to uh, pursue a, a graduate degree program? Um, do you have a unique background or something special about you that you want to uh, um, uh, highlight in your application? Uh, are you an athlete? Are you an artist? So all of these questions you need to ask yourself and, and have answers to because a lot of these universities and, and colleges will uh, most likely ask that kind of information in order to determine your applicability to their to their programs and what kind of schools are looking for someone uh, like you. Um, know why you want to study in the US. There are so many um, uh, advantages to studying in the US and uh, I'd like to just share uh, some of them with you. Um, quality uh, and accreditation. Uh, there are many, many uh, uh, good quality schools that are accredited. Uh, there are four, uh, over 4,500 universities and colleges in the U.S. So obviously you have so many uh, options to choose from and understanding yourself more will help you uh, reduce that number uh, and, and choose several schools that you would like to apply to. But um, uh, the advantages obviously to study in the U.S. Uh, includes flexibility, 
uh, critical thinking, state of the art facilities? Are you into research? Are you looking for a program that will enable you to do independent research while uh, under uh, in the undergraduate program uh, degree or or postgraduate degree? Uh, the international experience in networking. Imagine traveling abroad and, and getting your your um, education uh, outside of your home country and what that would mean to you in terms of uh, the international experience and being able to be involved in many activities and programs that uh, possibly you, you would not be able to be part of in your own home country. Working closely with professors is also very important. Uh, a student center approach to uh, uh, US study is also uh, an important factor and that may be something uh, that you are looking into and that may be something that you want to prioritize uh, as well. Again, uh, 4,500 plus universities and colleges, uh, it's, it's a very time consuming uh, task to determine which schools would be the best fit for you and so take the time to understand yourself and know what you want from a U.S. higher education. So these are just some of the uh, characteristics and advantages to studying in the U.S. Uh, as I said earlier, um, you know, uh, not all universities and, and programs would be the right fit for you. And so uh, the more you understand yourself, uh, what your needs are, what your qualifications are, we have to be realistic uh, in determining uh, what direction we want to pursue. Uh, and of course, preparing early, uh, understanding the qualifications and the requirements uh, is going to be a, a very um, uh, important factor in, in finding that right uh, fit for you. Okay, I'm starting to get some questions here and I will hopefully start answering those questions uh, as soon as I'm done with the, uh, the presentation. Um, matching your needs for the fit, for the best fit. As I said earlier, uh, you have your own specific needs. You may be interested in applying for uh, undergraduate degree program, graduate degree program, other programs that may be of, your, of interest to you. So understanding uh, um, your needs and finding uh, the best fit for, uh, for those needs is impor important. Three important um, uh, uh, attributes or uh, characteristics of, of finding the best fit uh, is, is academic. Uh, qualifications. Uh, what are you looking for, again, academically uh, to match your qualifications? What are you looking for personally uh, to match your own personal needs? And what are you looking for financially? Um, these are the, the three, uh, I believe, uh, uh, important factors in determining which uh, programs would be the best fit for you and then following through and, and beginning to uh, 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 prepare for the application, uh, application process. Um, we'll start uh, with, with, with researching your options, obviously. When planning to study in the United States, you'll find a great diversity of, of majors, uh, over uh, you know, hundreds or even thousands of, of, of majors. Uh, campus environments vary uh, from small uh, uh, rural to, to, um, uh, to urban cities, uh, entry requirements, tuition fees, living costs, all of that information needs to be uh, uh, you need to be well informed and you need to have uh, done your homework basically on, on, on uh, finding um, those uh, programs and, and that, that fit your need and, and, to, and the first step is to research those options and to decide what's most important uh, for you. What are you looking for academically? Uh, very important. Um, as I said earlier, um, know what you're we're looking for, what you're seeking. Uh, if you want to have a double major, if you want to major and minor in a, in a different interest, um, do you want to be part of a rigid, a rigid or flexible uh, program? Um, what types of professors would you uh, be willing to, uh, would you like to uh, work with and, and be part of their, of their program? Uh, facilities and equipment, uh, are you in the sciences, are you interested in research, 
Uh, and so a lot of these questions you need to ask yourself. Uh, what types of courses do you want to take? Do you prefer small classes versus, versus large classes? Um, uh, large classes may have you know, up to 300 students. Um, is this the kind of atmosphere that, that you're most comfortable with uh, and can be very productive? Um, well, you need a tutor. Uh, are you weak in certain uh, uh, areas? Uh, you, will, you will find that many uh, universities and colleges do have um, uh, centers to, to help students. Uh, tutoring centers to help uh, students in their uh, while they're pursuing their education and taking classes. Uh, we all uh, uh, eventually will will need some kind of support, academic support, and many of the universities and colleges in the U.S. do provide uh, such services. Uh, so uh, don't worry about that. But is that something that you want to consider as well? Uh, uh, and how and how important is that uh, to you? Um, the next slide. Now, personally, of course, we all have our, our personal, uh, uh, what we would like uh, or where we would like to, to study. Uh, are we interested in studying in a big city? Are we interested in a small city, rural area where everyone knows each other? Uh, do you prefer to be in a very small community uh, type atmosphere where everyone knows um, each other? Um, or do you like um, uh, to be part of uh, city life, uh, being able to um, uh, attend a university in a large city where there are so many other options that are uh, beyond the classroom uh, environment that you can pursue uh, your interests uh, in sports and arts? Um, would you prefer to be part of a sorority or a fraternity? Um, uh, there are many, many uh, clubs for international students. Is this something that you're also interested in? So also in, 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 in choosing the, the right fit for you, please do consider and take into consideration uh, your personal preferences. Obviously, uh, um, other issues uh, come to play in terms of your final decision. Uh, and of course, earlier I mentioned academic, uh, and now we're speaking about the personal uh, side of, of your choices. But it's also important to take that in consideration because you will be spending, uh, uh, you know, at least uh, if you're uh, planning to study undergraduate, uh, at least four years, postgraduate, uh, two or three years, uh, two to, to five years. So um, you want to be comfortable in the atmosphere and the environment that, that you'll be uh, uh, taking part in your academic life. And that's very important. From Hawaii to New Hampshire, 50 states, so many options for you. Uh, it's important for you to, um, uh, you know, uh, research um, schools. Uh, so many choices, as I said earlier. Um, if you're looking, uh, um, you know, weather may be a, a, a factor. You don't, maybe you don't like to, to be living in a very cold environment. Um, uh, maybe you would love to be near a beach. So that may be one of the criteria for, for choosing um, uh, and, and adding some of the schools to your list because they're, they're near uh, an ocean or um, you love skiing or you would like to pursue um, uh, and learn about uh, and learn how to ski, for example. And so uh, these are the questions that you want to ask yourself and, and, and uh, when you're researching, researching those, those uh, programs that offer uh, what you want, want to study and what you want to pursue outside of the uh, campus life. From big cities to small cities, so many choices, 4, 000, over 4,500 uh, universities and colleges, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of programs that, that you will need to research uh, possibly and figure out which is the best program that uh, would, would be the, the, the proper program for you that you will uh, be successful in. Uh, a very important factor, obviously, is finances, and we all know that um, uh, everywhere, whether you're in your home country or, or planning to travel abroad, you know, finances does take uh, a large portion of our, our, our thinking and, and our planning because we want to be able to secure enough funds to be able to continue our education, whether it's in your home country or abroad. So just imagine uh, if you are planning to travel and study abroad, it will be uh, more expensive for you. So you, you need to take into consideration um, the expenses required, uh, the total cost. Um, you need to also keep in mind that you, you most likely will be required to have your own personal funds. 
um, not many uh, um, applicants will be eligible for financial aid or or scholarships. And so it's important for you um, to also set aside uh, some funds uh, uh, so that you'll be able to uh, um, uh, offset uh, what what the financial aid uh, offers or scholarship offers that are are presented to you um, when you do apply and, and hopefully receive. Uh, acceptance. So uh, keep in mind that you will need uh, to have uh, uh, some personal funds and, and the amount all, all obviously will vary uh, from uh, university to university uh, because the tuition costs and, 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 and living costs uh, will vary from state to state. And so you want to take that into consideration and, and have that be included as part of your research. Uh, financial assistance is available to many um, uh, uh, international students. Of course, depending on the university or college, um, some uh, uh, public schools, public universities may not offer as much for international students versus uh, uh, private institutions. And so uh, you want to also uh, research uh, institutions that if you do uh, need uh, substantial financial aid, you will want to look uh, into institutions that offer uh, uh, need-based aid possibly. Uh, in addition to other forms of, of uh, financial assistance. And so it is available uh, and it's it's available. Uh, uh, there's much more money available at some uh, programs versus other university programs. And so uh, that's where the, 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 the that's where um, uh, that's when the, 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 the factor comes in of, of having to research and take your time finding those programs, finding those schools that do offer financial assistance. Obviously, if you are, again, a dual citizen, if you are a citizen of the U US, you may also have other um, funding options available to you. And so it's important for you to um, uh, review and, and uh, uh, understand what's available through the individual websites of these uh, universities or colleges, as well as um, uh, uh, going and visiting the nearest Education USA Advising Center uh, near you uh, to ask about financial aid uh, and scholarship opportunities. Now, if there, if uh, uh, an Education Advising Center is is uh, is not available uh, where you live, you may uh, contact or you may log on to the EducationUSA.state.gov website and search for uh, the nearest Education Center near you, or send in. Um, an email uh, uh, asking for information and um, uh, the, the system will, will respond to you uh, and respond to your question and try to help you um, through email communication. Obviously, the projected net cost, uh, it's, it's um, you know, you will, you will have um, to not only determine your personal funding, but financial aid available. And also with the projected net cost, that includes um, uh, your tuition, your housing, uh, uh, your insurance. Um, all international students must have insurance while they're studying and living in the United States. Uh, books, uh, uh, stipend, monthly stipend. There are um, uh, work study programs available also for, for international students that you may want to also consider. And there may be loan programs. And so each university or college will have its own um, financial aid uh, program available or services or offer uh, or, or what it's offering international students. It will be for the most part available on their website. Uh, and if something is not clear to you, then um, I do suggest that you contact the admissions, international admissions office at these universities and, uh, and uh, inquire about uh, financial aid or scholarship opportunities for international uh, students. Now, of course, it's very important uh, among the so many uh, programs that are available institutions. Um, obviously, um, it will not be very conducive and, and, and uh, uh, you know, realistic for for all of us to uh, research. You know, uh, all the 4,500 plus institutions in the United States. But I, but uh, there are so many um, um, online resources. Obviously, in addition to uh, the educational advising centers um, and educationusa.state.gov website to help you narrow down your 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 choices. And uh, when I, what I mean by narrowing down your choices, really taking a realistic look 
at, uh, at your academic uh, standing, your academic potential, your grades, um, and, and figure out, and of course, uh, I haven't mentioned the testing, but of course you'll, you will be required to uh, submit uh, standardized exams such as a TOEFL IBT, uh, possibly the SAT, uh, for those interested in, in graduate study, the GRE or GMAT. Uh, so there are exams that you will be required to um, uh, register and sit for and submit uh, as part of your application. And so um, it's important for you to, to have that information, to have uh, your scores um, uh, available to you before you make your final decision as, as far as which uh, schools you plan to apply to, because they will have requirements, and one of those requirements um, is, is um, uh, submitting standardized test exams. Uh, uh, understanding the institution, you can, you can make a list, as I've, uh, I, I show here. You can uh, um, draw a chart. Uh, and include your, you know, up to um, uh, as many as 15 to 20 schools initially, if you would like to create a larger list um, and, and indicate um, and have, have this chart available to you and add to this chart the names of the schools that you're interested in and figure out from your research uh, uh, academically, personally, financially, and of course the application deadlines, make a list um, uh, of, of the advantages of applying to these schools, uh, indicate the information uh, that I've shown here in terms of uh, the admission rates. Uh, many schools will indicate their admission rates. Will they be selective schools uh, or highly selective schools? Um, um, and so they will indicate uh, of the applicants that do submit uh, you know, what percentage of those applicants that actually uh, receive um, admission offers. So that will also give you an idea of how, how selective these, these schools are. Uh, and of course, um, uh, any, any characteristics that you want to add to the uh, academic column, you can do that. In terms of personal, you could add um, uh, any, any uh, uh, characteristics of, of the school in terms of the campus, city life, uh, what it offers in terms of um, clubs, extracurricular activities, uh, programs uh, that are, are of interest to you. Uh, financially, obviously, um, you want to um, be able to find, uh, you know, universities that do offer uh, financial aid and uh, scholarships, especially if you are uh, someone who uh, can qualify academically, who, who does have a strong uh, transcript. Um, if you're undergraduate from ninth grade through uh, through 12th, uh, if you're uh, an undergraduate uh, and you're planning on uh, continuing your, your um, postgraduate education, then uh, your, your undergraduate studies and, every, and, and any other um, information that uh, would be important uh, and applicable to the application process. Um, uh, financing, you know, private schools versus public schools, which schools offer uh, uh, financial aid, which schools do not which schools do offer merit-based aid and, and the maximum. And, and you know, the cost of, of, of studying in the US uh, can range from, from 20,000 all the way uh, to uh, 60,000 plus. And so to under, understand um, the cost, the total cost of the education, what uh, personal funds you have, and uh, how much you will need in terms of financial assistance would be indicated in this, in this column. Obviously, the last column are the application uh, details, application deadlines, uh, if tests are required. And so uh, you won't be able to, um, when you have this chart, be able to uh, schedule uh, uh, your tests, uh, register for and schedule tests so that you'll be able to submit uh, the required documentation uh, uh, before the application deadline. That's very, very important. Um, next slide. Research and narrow your choices. I had initially mentioned that um, you can start off with 15 to 20 schools that you may be interested in, but I think um, uh, at the final at the final uh, um, uh, filter, uh, I think filtering down to five to ten schools uh, that would match uh, uh, your interests and would be the the right fit for you would be something that we would like to suggest to you uh, is to choose five to ten. Two schools to apply to because 
many schools do require um, application fees, and so it can be costly. Um, and I think having five to 10 schools, a variety, a diverse uh, um, a number of schools, those that may be selective, highly selective, uh, those that uh, may offer substantial financial aid and those that may not offer. Again, it's going back to your personal needs and your ability to also uh, fund uh, your education. And so you would be the, the expert on this. You would know how much uh, finances you will need in addition to your personal finances. So uh, it's important for you to uh, consider uh, your academic uh, profile, financial need, uh, and also your personal um, interests uh, uh, before you uh, make that uh, final list uh, of schools of between five, uh, five to ten. Um, registering and preparing for the um, for the required test is very, very important. Um, there are deadlines, obviously. Uh, today is the 1st of, of, um, of October, and uh, many uh, schools in the US will, will start their um, application cycle. Uh, and there are schools that have application deadlines in October. Uh, there are uh, schools that have um, application deadlines starting in November through January. And so uh, you want to understand and, and be able to uh, prepare ahead of time uh, for, for, your, uh, for your application uh, um, uh, process and, and take the required exams. And there are uh, exams uh, such as the TOEFL IBT, the SAT, uh, you want to be able to find uh, loc to locate these these test centers in your area, uh, and um, and uh, prepare well in advance so that if you do need to um, retake uh, the exams for um, uh, possibly a higher score, you will have uh, plenty of time to do that. Uh, for international students, sometimes it's, it can be a challenge to uh, prepare and test um, and take the uh, SAT exam, and so they may need additional time uh, for that as well. Completing your application package is very important. It's not just a matter of, of uh, deciding on which schools and then taking the test. There, you will also be required to uh, write essays uh, as part of your application, and so that will also be time consuming. You would want to review that those essays with your with with teachers or friends or someone uh, that can uh, critique you. And, and help you uh, and give you some guidelines. And of course, uh, uh, most importantly, it's important for you to uh, always think of the, uh, the closest Education USA Advising Center so that they will be able to provide you with um, uh, the services, the free services, and the resources that, are, that, that may be available to you that you can take advantage of uh, during this uh, process, the registration of and preparing for the exams and the completion of your application package and also having uh, someone who is or having a center that can serve as your um, you know, one-stop shop uh, for information and resources and advice. Uh, on, on, on various issues that may come up that you will need uh, expert advice on and, 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 uh, uh, and have someone review possibly your application. And so the Education USA, uh, Education USA centers um, have uh, multiple um, services that they offer. Uh, and uh, many of these services are free of charge. And so you wanna uh, contact the nearest um, center uh, to uh, learn what they can offer and how they can uh, help you with, with the process. Uh, these are some additional tools, search tools and resources that you can also um, uh, um, look into. Uh, of course, there are so many uh, sites available now uh, online. Uh, obviously, uh, the educationusa.state.gov uh, site is, is really a one-stop shop for all your uh, information needs uh, for studying in the US from the undergraduate uh, uh, level all the way through postgraduate English language and short term programs. Um, uh, financial aid opportunities that universities are offering 
uh, a lot of information, testing uh, information and resources. Uh, and I think uh, uh, it's important for you to uh, begin your search, begin the process with, uh, with educationusa.state.gov and then move forward and, and uh, uh, possibly research other uh, resources uh, like the collegeboard.org, which is the website for registering for the SAT. Peterson's.com, PrincetonReview.com, and of course, um, Amadis.org, uh, uh, and um, uh, embassies and consulates uh, um, um, will, uh, and many that I that I am aware of, do offer um, exchange programs as well. So you may you may, be want, you may want to uh, consider be, uh, applying to an exchange pro studying exchange program through um, uh, the U.S. Embassy or consulate or through um, uh, international organizations organizations uh, such as um, Amid East. Okay. So uh, I think this is my my last uh, one of my la la next to the last slide I think. Um, it's really important for you to be re be realistic with an eye towards the future. Um, it's a it's a long process. Uh, it's not something that you just think about and in, in two or three days you have your applications ready. Um, uh, we do recommend that uh, you begin the process at least uh, uh, 16, uh, 16 months or 18 months ahead of the uh, application deadlines to give yourself uh, time to do the research and, and uh, prepare uh, for exams and, and uh, all the other uh, requirements uh, needed uh, to apply. And so uh, take that time, know yourself, know what you want, take advantage of the resources available to you through educationusa.gov. Uh, we also have um, uh, webinars on a regular basis. Uh, there are um, uh, um, blogs, uh, and uh, and I think it's important for you to uh, get as much information as, as you can to that will help you uh, make your decision and and uh, and make it uh, and make your decision so that it is a is a decision that will that you will not regret because it will be you know, between four to, to eight years of, of your education in the U.S., depending on what degree program you're interested in. And so it's important to have uh, to have all the information available to you that is that is accurate and up to date and uh, the Education USA uh, advising centers and educationusa.state.gov does provide that um, information uh, for you. Uh, know what you're looking for academically, personally and financially and narrow your choices and uh, enjoy enjoy the search. Um, I hope you'll be able to locate uh, uh, an Education USA Center near you. Uh, and if not, um, please feel free to send in your emails and, and request for information through the educationusa.state.gov um, website. And I think uh, I'm ready now to uh, go through and, and uh, answer some of your questions. Um, Halima, I'm Halima from Algeria. I have a bachelor's in English language, but I have forgotten English. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so, let's see. This I need, I'm trying to figure out how to. I don't think she continued. Well, Halima, thank you for your, your, your question. I think there's a question there somewhere. Um, um, Halima, um, uh, if you think you need uh, assistance um, or you want to improve your English, um, I would recommend uh, possibly, again, uh, locating an education advising center near you. Uh, there may be programs available uh, that you may want to uh, pursue and register for that will improve your English. Of course, um, if you do have a, a, um, a BA degree in English and you want to pursue a program in the U.S., a graduate program, of course, English uh, um, proficiency is important. And so you want to 
be able to be uh, prepared and, 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 and have the uh, English uh, level that required to apply. And so check out the Education USA um, uh, or center near you or um, begin the process by uh, uh, preparing for uh, the TOEFL exam. If you plan to study in the U.S. for your master's degree, uh, the question wasn't wasn't complete. So, uh, if you want to uh, send me uh, a com uh, the completed um, uh, question, I'd, I'd be more than happy to uh, be more specific with you on that. Uh, Lawrence, hello. I would like a full scholarship in English masters. I would like to apply for an online uh, for online or one or another. What are the steps? I would like to apply for a full scholarship. Well, Lawrence, a full scholarship, um, of course, uh, you need to do your research. Uh, you need to ask yourself, will you be able to qualify for a full scholarship? Um, many programs um, may offer substantial financial aid, uh, uh, but many programs will require that, that you also provide uh, your own personal funds. And so many of the scholarships uh, are merit-based. They, they are uh, based on uh, academic excellence uh, in addition to, um, um, you know, certain uh, level of, of, uh, of proficiency in the standardized test, test scores, but you really need to check uh, with the specific institution uh, and uh, learn from that institution through its own website what are the requirements or qualifications, uh, what would qualify you to apply for uh, a scholarship, whether it's merit-based or otherwise. But uh, there are scholarships out there for international students, and your best resource would be uh, to uh, um, uh, log on to the individual school website and to learn what kind of uh, scholarships they offer. You may find that you're interested in one school, but they don't offer uh, any aid to international students. And so uh, you will need to um, research uh, more schools to find uh, the schools that do offer uh, aid. But then again, what's important to you is to find the school that will, will be the best fit for you in terms of what program that you're interested in. And then look for um, a scholarship or a financial aid uh, um, offer uh, that is that is that is um, a part of the the the, the university uh, program. Any more questions? Okay. Okay, Lujane, um, what happens? Her question is very interesting question. What happens if you have uh, taken? Only regular classes. I'm not interested in taking AP classes. Will you, the university accept? Well, again, um, uh, Lorraine, that will um, obviously, as an international student, many are many international schools do not offer uh, AP programs, and so they will be applying um, as as uh, you know uh, and, and submitting the transcripts as non AP regular um, course level. Uh, they may be applying as, 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 as IB or IGCE, or they may be applying um, uh, in their own national uh, system. And so uh, AP classes are, are, are for, for some schools, so some universities may be considered um, uh, an important uh, factor in deciding to offer um, uh, a scholarship. Uh, some uh, universities may uh, exempt uh, students, uh, um, if they take an AB, AP level or, uh, or advanced level classes and exams uh, for uh, entry level um, uh, courses at the university. But again, uh, the, the official answer would, would have to come from the university or college that you're, you plan to apply to. So um, that information will be uh, on the university or college website. Another question. Um, Al Fahed, hi. I want to study in the US to get best learning. I'm from Iraq. Need to study Masters of Accounting. Can you please? Okay. 
That's not a complete question. I'm sorry, I can't. Um, I'm sitting here. Well, Al Fahid, thank you for for contacting me from from Iraq. Uh, I'm happy to uh, meet you. Uh, and if you are interested in studying uh, Masters of Accounting. Um, we do have um, uh, advising uh, centers, Education USA advising centers in Iraq, and I do recommend that you contact um, the American um, Embassy there, and uh, you can contact um, the Education USA advisors there, and they would be more than happy to help you in your in your search. Okay, Miriam. Hello, Miriam. I'm Miriam from Morocco and I want to study biology. I'm looking for a full scholarship. So can you help me? I wish I can, Miriam. Um, Miriam, uh, looking at scholarships are very, very um, uh, scarce. Uh, and um, many uh, university and college programs have their own uh, criteria for offering uh, scholarships to international students. Uh, and I'm sure that if you qualify academically based on um, uh, the uh, admission requirements for those particular universities or colleges, you, you may well qualify, but it's very competitive. Um, you know, students or potential applicants are applying from around the world for these very scarce scholarships, and so it can be very competitive. And I do suggest, um, uh, uh, because you are contacting me from Morocco, that uh, you may want to contact the Education USA Advising Center there, uh, and they can help you uh, with with your search and possibly um, uh, connect you with potential um, uh, programs uh, either through um, their the Education USA Advising Center there or other programs that are offered that will be um, uh, interesting to you to apply to. So uh, check out the Advising Center in Morocco uh, and uh, hopefully they'll they will I'm sure help you with your search but again as I said uh, scholarships are very scarce and um, they they are very competitive and um, you have to have a very strong application package to to um, to be considered uh, and um, unfortunately uh, there there aren't that many scholarships to go around to all the wonderfully um, uh, qual you know academically strong students who have strong potential, but um, uh, I, I do suggest that you contact the uh, Education USA uh, Center there. Um, Muhammad, is that chart available on educationusa.com? I'm assuming you're talking about the chart that is that I that, that's uh, uh, this chart. Um, uh, you will see similar charts. You may see uh, information. Um, that will that will be similar to this uh, chart um, uh, on the educationusa.state.gov um, website. Uh, but if not, um, I'm sure that um, uh, on the uh, on this page you will find uh, similar information uh, that will that will help you um, um, uh, set up your chart uh, in a very similar manner. So. Uh, this is just one sample, um, uh, and of course, uh, you can you can check the website to see if if there are similar charts, um, and if not, you can uh, send an email uh, through the uh, uh, state.gov uh, website, and uh, uh, we'll be happy to uh, whoever answers your email will be happy to f to help you uh, find information that is uh, that that will uh, help you simplify the 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 um, the process uh, and and uh, locating your options. Let's see any more questions? Um, um, Mohammed Du, uh, I want to know if you offer scholarships. Well, I'm here as a representative of the Education uh, USA uh, advising, and of course, um, I'm not here to offer any scholarships. Uh, most scholarships are offered through the universities or colleges or through exchange programs. And so if you are interested, um, the educationusa.state.gov uh, website does have a section on financing your education. 
and you can log on there and there are plenty of universities and colleges that do uh, uh, upload their information uh, regarding scholarship and financial aid opportunities. Any more questions? So keep them coming. I'm very happy to answer any of your questions that you may have. Nicholas, are Kenyans required to provide English proficiency proof? Can, um, for the most part, if you are uh, studying uh, abroad uh, and, you're apply, and you're planning to apply to US universities, they many, if not all, will require um, uh, some uh, English proficiency exam uh, to evaluate your English proficiency. Uh, one of those exams is the TOEFL IBT, the other exam is the IELTS, um, uh, and of course if, if you uh, have studied in uh, a, an English speaking curriculum or institution for a certain number of years, some universities and colleges may exempt you from taking uh, or submitting the the um, the the, uh, the the IELTS or the TOEFL IBT, but this is something that you will uh, need to check with the particular university or college. Uh, but if you are uh, studying in your language uh, and your education has been in your own home language, then uh, uh, most likely you will be required to take the um, to sit for an English proficiency exam, such as the the TOEFL IBT or IELTS. See more questions. Um, Iman, thank you, Iman. I'm Iman. I wanted to know: is there any good resource to get broad information about universities, for example? Well, educationusa.state.gov is your one one-stop shop for information about U.S. universities and 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 colleges and programs. Uh, I did also. Um, include other other sources. Um, uh, of course, educationusa.state.gov, collegeboard.org, peterson's.com, uh, princetonreview.com, and of course, amedis.org. And there are there is a multitude uh, uh, of additional uh, resources that you can uh, um, also find information about universities and colleges and in general studying in the US. But um, for, for our purposes, for the purpose of this session, we are recommending that you your first stop uh, should be the educationusa.state.gov uh, and then uh, continue on with other resources if uh, some of the information that you're looking for is not uh, found, but I can uh, I can guarantee you when I speak with uh, with confidence that you'll find uh, most of the information that you will need uh, and and uh, and suggestions for further uh, research tools will also be included in in this website as well. Halima, yes, uh, I, I agree with you. And I encourage you to improve your English proficiency and then uh, apply for uh, your master's program. Uh, I wish you all the best, uh, Halima, um, because uh, I'm sure uh, you understand yourself uh, the most and you know more about how uh, your English proficiency is. And if you feel like you need to uh, take more time to prepare uh, and and uh, to uh, be a very competitive applicant, uh, spending that extra time uh, and and uh, improve to improve uh, your English uh, proficiency is is uh, is uh, something I would encourage you as well to do. Okay. I think I've answered most of the questions that I've seen. Okay, Nura. Hi, Nura. Hello, I've just started my senior year last year and I will obtain my bachelor's degree in a year. Can I start applying? And I'm assuming 
you want you want to start applying for a master's program well of course if you if you if this is your this is your senior year and you want to uh, start applying for uh, a master's program of course um, what's important for you is to uh, spend time uh, thinking about what you want to study and begin your research and and figure out uh, based on the, uh, the the requirements for application the required tests that you will need to submit and the deadlines um, you can you can you can start um, uh, applying you can start preparing uh, of course applying you will need to know uh, the deadlines uh, for these um, uh, programs and so um, if, if there, uh, I didn't mention this, but there's rolling, uh, rolling admission or ro rolling deadline that will give you some flexibility. You can apply uh, during the course of the year, but um, and there is no a specific deadline mentioned. Uh, so you can spend, you can apply during the course of the year and the university or college will inform you of your admission status uh, once they receive and review your, your application. But those uh, programs that do have deadlines, you want to make sure that that um, that you uh, you are uh, you're aware of those deadlines and you'll prepare uh, for uh, any tests required and preparation beforehand so that when you do submit your application, it is a complete application. Okay, Anissa. Hi, Anissa. Anissa's question is, if you have a great essay and a good score on the TOEFL and extracurricular activities, does the SAT score, I'm assuming, matter? Well, again, um, um, Anissa, you would need to um, uh, receive that information based on what the university or college is requiring. So if they're requiring both the TOEFL and the SAT, uh, scores, then you would need to submit both. Uh, some universities or colleges are SAT option, SAT optional, so you just may be required to submit the TOEFL IBT, but I will not be able to answer that question for you. Um, these are the requirements of the universities and colleges, so you want to uh, check directly with the university or college uh, to determine uh, what uh, tests are required. And again, uh, some uh, universities uh, are, um, are, are SAT optional or SAT optional, so you don't need to submit the SAT, if, especially if it's not a very high score, uh, and you want to in increase your chance of acceptance just by submitting a very strong uh, or high to uh, TOEFL IBT score. So uh, that will be up to um, basically the university and what their requirements uh, are uh, for testing. I think I may need to answer maybe one more or two more questions. Okay, Nicola. Hello, Nicola. Please, I have three questions already. Could you just tell me how to find schools that provide full financial aid? Wow. Okay. Um, I'll go back um, to educationusa.state.gov. That should be your first um, uh, source of information for finding schools. There's a whole section on financing your education. And I do recommend that you start there. Uh, and uh, if you need additional resources, there are plenty of other uh, um, online research uh, engines that will, 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 uh, will help you um, uh, with your search. Uh, again, uh, I'll, I'll go back to this slide and just kind of um, uh, repeat what I mentioned earlier about um, the resources available. Uh, but I, I do strongly recommend that you start with the educationusa.state.gov because it does have a whole section on financing uh, your education. I hope I'll be able to answer all your questions. Um, yes, Nicola uh, uh, added uh, additional information uh, about the, his financial need, and um, 
yes, it is important uh, for you to to research your options, especially if you are looking for uh, substantial financial aid. It is it can be very costly, and if your um, economic situation uh, will not be able to, um, uh, your economic situation is, is so that you will not be able to um, uh, provide your own personal funds or. Uh, um, uh, to offset uh, your 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 scholarship or financial aid offer, then um, it will be difficult. Um, so that's why I do suggest that you uh, um, go through the Education USA uh, website and under the financing your education. There there are, there's a lot of information about um, funding sources, whether through the university or through um, private funds. Uh, there are some some websites there that um, are uh, are indicated that you can also uh, research. So I, I wish you all the best of luck. I think that's it for me. Um, I want to thank you for joining um, uh, College Week Live and joining this session. I wish you all the best of luck uh, in your pursuit of uh, your education in the U.S. and uh, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.